Let's get right into the news. Uh, okay, this reminds me of the movie The Day the Earth Froze. It's a Finnish-Soviet co-production. It was done on MST3K. And the West Wind, who plays a major role in the legendary retelling, um, talks exactly like that. I am the West Wind. You need to make the sample. I didn't even shower. I didn't even get ready. Uh, well, then you, you just go fucking do that, okay? We didn't need to know. Like, we don't have smell o vision and that's a good thing. So you didn't have to tell us that. Yeah, I, I went straight from Tanny, sweating my ass off, right into this shit. I didn't even prepare to do nothing. Ready to go with yeah, okay. I mean, just a... Uh, he just gives so much thought to it. I mean, admittedly, I'm saying this like uh, a roasting and for not giving... Uh, not preparing the thing. Like, my prep for this... My pre I mean, my prep for this is I kind of look at these assholes' YouTube pages and... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. See if there's anything roastable. And that's kind of it. And other than that, I, like, put on lipstick and I set up my cameras and stuff. I actually, um, in, in one of my videos, actually, it was, like, the Franca del No video. I'm from the 70s, too. Um, there's, like, a half a second where it is me, where you see in the window capture, uh, um, uh, the YouTube page of Caleb Muppet because I was just checking to see if there were any videos because I wanted to see if he had decided to do his own downfall parody. And he hadn't. And I didn't cut it because I didn't realize it was there because it was literally like half a second. I did not realize it was there. And the comment I get on that video then is... Is this suddenly a pro Caleb Maupin channel? And it's like, no. <laughs> no. I mean, I didn't even realize it was because it was a Spanish language video about the, about the propaganda for the plebiscite coming up in Chile. And it was like, there was nothing to do with Maupin in it. And I'm like, why? As I just go, hell no, why would you think that? And then I looked at it again and it was like, half a second of fucking Caleb Maupin's face and... That, that makes somebody think maybe this is like some subliminally pro-Caleb video. I mean, just look up his name in my fucking YouTube channel, uh, random commenter person, if you want to be reassured of that. Yeah, and you'll see what I have to say about the Caleb Muppet. Point to this bullshit. Straight, without any hesitation, without any meditation, without any amelioration. Yes, there is clearly no amelioration, and I mean his heterosexuality could use it. I mean he is he is an unameliorated, un a thoughtless heterosexual. I can buy that completely about him. We are live. We're gonna be doing this. So so uh, I don't want I don't really want my chat. I want to focus on people who are not fans and who are not regular watchers. If you're a regular watcher... Well, I'm not a fan, so I guess he's focusing on me. I guess the chat, you guys, you, you, are, you all aren't fans either, are you? So he's focusing on us. This is for us. This is for us, chat gang. Do you want to ask questions? Just do the Patreon. No, I do it every week. Y'all questions, I don't want people like, oh, so hi, I'm a big fan, right? Yeah, you guys do that every week, okay? So we want to get people who are outside of the community to do this AMA with. Because I do AMAs with my... Ch AMA? What? Uh, oh, ask me anything. I was like, against medical advice? Why? Because, like, his shit will cause you strokes? One thing I have to say, like, I watched... I did a video. I did part of a video. And the one thing I can say is, on the specific subject of international law... Unlike Caleb, he actually does seem to have read a book all the way through. Like, he actually, I mean, his analysis sucked in a number of ways. In particular, he over, he, he seems, he thinks international law is actually a thing that matters. And 
it's on a level other than propaganda, which it mostly isn't. But, on the other hand, he actually does have a tolerable grasp on the subject, which is more than I can say about any subject I've ever heard Caleb Maupin speak on. Chat all the time, okay? Yeah. I do AMAs with my chat all the time, so we're going to be doing this in the politics discord, and um, ain't no need for our own gorillas to be doing the AMA, really, you know? I mean, you, you can if you want, but it's like, it's kind of superfluous. Okay, okay, I'm skipping okay, ahead. Okay. And we are super early, okay? We are super early today. I don't give a fuck, dude. What is, that is, I don't share that many viewers with Jimmy Dore, okay? You guys have to understand, my, my age demographic is like 90% 20s, okay? Jesus. Oh, okay. He Oh, he did? Okay, that explains a lot. Although, then again, if it's law school in the U.S., you can go through, you can get through law school and not know anything about international law in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, especially U.S. law school. It is amazing how much shit they don't teach you. Like, international law, international human rights law, comparative law, those are all normal, required things. Hello, Phoenix Rising. Haven't seen you in ages. Good to see you. I mean, those are totally normal things that you need in order to get a law degree in a lot of countries. Uh, and in the U.S., you don't get to have to know any of that stuff because, I mean, comparative law, you, you might start to question whether we, in fact, have the best constitution in the history of writing shit on paper. So I do not... Uh, believe me, I mean, I've been in a, around law professors who didn't know shit about their subject... I mean, I remember I had a constitutional law professor who decided, he decided to claim that um, the one, the unique thing about the U.S. Constitution is dual pro due process, which it, it is not. I mean, that not even the words due process, those are extremely common. You can find them in constitutional law or constitutional theory in all sorts of countries, all over Latin America, in Japan, they even use the words due processo. Uh, I mean, right in their constitutional law books. Uh, um, yeah, although in the actual constitution, they use a proper Japanese, uh, na, na uh, they say. But I mean, this is uh, like really basic stuff. And I said, no, actually, that's a pretty normal thing. And in fact, the U.S. isn't all that great on due process. Uh, particularly in the area of like the rights of criminal defendants, which the U.S. does not do very well on by international comparison. He's like, oh yeah, well in France you're guilty until proven innocent. I said, no, that's actually not true. In fact, explicitly in the Constitution and the Criminal Code, there's a presumption of innocence. He goes, no, there isn't. So I bring my fucking code penal to the class and I go, hey, here you go. Here's the section that um, has the presumption of innocence. Very explicit, unlike the U.S., and he goes, yeah, but that's what about in practice? And it's like, you want to compare in practice? And you're standing the U.S. in practice? Criminal justice in practice in the U.S.? And you want to stay, you want to compare that internationally? I'd stick with the text and quit while we are behind. Not, uh, Jimmy Dore's age demographic is much older than me. So that's just a fact. Here's Sedona for streaming super. That is just a, a matter of fact. That is just factually correct. I should stream this early every day, shouldn't I? Wouldn't it be nice if I stream like this every day? I do this every single day, okay? So I, there, they should be, um, they should be, uh, contact me whenever. One second, I'm gonna blow my nose because I got some shit in my nose. I'll be right back. Yeah, he's got, you got shit in lots of places. Okay. Queerness and heterogeneity. This is the guy who is, like, literally... Yeah. Wow, how did, uh, how does Ted Bunny defend Death Row Defendants? Like, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure of the comparison. I didn't know that he even did that. 
sugar tits I'd ask a question. So sugar tits question is, uh, do you recognize that capitalism encourages a heteronormative society through its meritocratic structure and that queerness encourages a shift to socialism and is actually not a product of capitalism or liberal corporation? I would argue the the exact opposite is true. Okay, um, so he, he's going to go fully full on bourgeois deviation shit. This is not surprising because he is also at some point state yeah, at one point stated that sexuality is itself inherently wrong. Hey, I know that's what you meant. Uh, I was joking. True. Capitalism does not promote true heterogeneity because heterogeneity requires an acknowledgement of a material base. Uh, specifically, first of the people, but also, you know, of labor. Specific heterogeneity. I think you mean. Oh well, I mean, in his caption, he says heterogeneity. Specifically, as in command, as opposed to profit. Whereas profit is kind of homogeneous. It, capitalism only is possible because of this homogeneous, homogeneizing universal state. First, the one created in the French Revolution, or you know, with the English Parliament, depending on how you want to look at it. And capitalism is actually all about homogeneity rather than heterogeneity, right? So... He sounds vaguely English for a second there. Okay. Yeah, well, he was... Uh, I don't know where he is now. I don't know if he's one of the um, dead-enders. Because a lot of Caleb's orbit just outright just dropped him like a hot turd uh, after the medium part came out. That is why the capitalist civilization is the only one in the history of mankind to have normalized, or not normalized, but has institutionalized um, non-heterosexual, non-heterosexuality, without getting too much into this. Uh, that's not actually true. It is not the only kind of society that has institutionalized non-heterosexual sexualities. Lots of different societies, lots of societies pre-capitalist societies had uh, much um, more diverse takes on gender and sexuality. Oh, he, d he did? He's a Caleb dead-ender? Um, I, I don't agree with that whatsoever. I think that what they call queerness is 100% a product of capitalism. Now, we can look at socialist societies for reference, okay? Um... In the Soviet Union, um, and in communist states in general, both in the past and today, with one... Actually, I don't even think Cuba's an exception. I I'm going to get to Cuba in a second. Oh, okay. He's saying he doesn't think Cuba's... A, they, see, I can see why he says this, and now, now I'm curious. Because you actually look at Cuba's laws, he's going to... Uh, and Cuba, at this point, has, like, possibly the most explicitly queer-friendly constitution on the planet... <sighs> ah, fuck, I... Sorry about that, Chad. I didn't mean to make your messages all disappear. They are far more heterosexual than capitalist states are. In uh, wait, they are... F what does it mean to be more heterosexual? What is it? What does it mean for a state to be more heterosexual? I do, like, I mean, it's a state. I mean, its sexuality is very clear. It fucks the working class. General, there's a more pronounced expression of masculinity there. There's also a more pronounced expression of femininity there, and there's stronger family values, stronger family ties, more traditional gender relations there than you have elsewhere. Uh, uh, and then, first of all, that's not true. Um, and I mean, at the very least, that is a, a that is a narrative that is very quickly complicated. I mean, you look at um, East Germany, for example, compared to West Germany, it was a hell of a lot more feminist. At least, I mean, in terms of just strictly like sort of bread and butter feminist issues, like sort of like uh, the uh, like the accessibility of no fault divorce. The ability to cohabit outside marriage, the ability to get an abortion if you needed one. Like, uh, East Germany was way better than West Germany on all those things. 
Well, no, I, it, I mean, they, it, what, it, you mean, I mean, that, that's a term, that's a derogatory term for a Jewish lawyer, and I, I don't think that, I, I please tell me we don't have to claim this guy. Uh, and then people point out Cuba, you know, has this, you know, it's been pioneering LGBT rights. Yeah, actually, and on, like, trans healthcare, East Germany was somewhat better. It wasn't great, but, I mean, West Germany absolutely sucks shit on it and still sucks shit on it. I mean, they make the fucking Tavistock gatekeeping bullshit look progressive by comparison. Uh, yeah, and, I mean, you look at the sexuality in the early Soviet Union as well. I mean, you can see it in the art. It was, there was a lot of very, a lot of, like, free love kind of stuff going on. Stalin actually moved back on that at the same time as he was, you know, otherwise, you know, he was kind of completing the Soviet Union's move away from even the pretense of moving towards communism. A lot of people don't know the origin of that word, unfortunately. Well, that actually has been exclusively no pioneered by... It was one of the Castro daughters. I forgot her specific name. But... She was educated in the United States, and she imported this to Cuba. Uh, yes, you see, they never had any queer people in Cuba until Castro's daughter did. Uh, first of all, yeah. I mean, he also he also recriminalized homosexuality. But, um... Uh, the thing is, it's actually, if you look at it, it's Castro himself. Fidel himself actually gave a whole speech about how, I mean, like, expressing shame about how fucked up the uh, the Cuban states, you know, post-revolutionary Cuban states' treatment of queer people had been, and vowing improvement. Like, it was more than I have heard anyone in the U.S., anyone in, like, Western Europe, uh, ever say on the subject. Like, who, uh, any politician who was actually there for that period and was on the wrong side of it at the time. Yeah, <laughs> como saber que alguien nunca ha entrado en una clase de antropología sin que te lo diga. Uh, how to know that somebody's never been to an anthropology class without them telling you. Yeah, that's about right. That was her initiative, and it's there's been a back and forth. You know, there's a Catholic part of Cuba that's against it. Uh, actually, there's overwhelming, like, popular support. The, the thing about the Constitution... Uh, in Cuba, the one that is extremely queer friendly, and now also the the families code, they specifically pluralize families to recognize all the different actual family structures existing in the society. Like, if this is not a thing that exists, if there simply are no queer people in Cuba, if it's just something that's imported from the United States, then people would be like, why do we need this stuff? It's just like it's irrelevant to our lives. But actually, there was a lot of public support all over Cuba for the idea of reforming the family's co family code and turning it into a family's code, plural, that would recognize all the different possible ways a you know, family structure could be made, you know, yeah, based on different sexualities, different approaches to relationships and shit. Yeah. I mean... And, they, I mean, it was the same thing for the Constitution. And I have to say, I mean, it doesn't take much. But the constitutional process in Cuba absolutely put this fucking cocina constituyente in Chile to shame. It isn't hard to do that. Because it, that thing was just a fucking joke. But it was based on actual, like, local, direct consultations. People could actually, you know... People could uh, make their own proposals and bring it in, and they were, they, you know, they were taken into account, and the, that is how you end up getting this, like, the queerest fucking constitution that you could possibly have. So, yeah, I mean, because I say that you can possibly have specifically because I think at a certain point the queerness actually has to transcend fucking bourgeois legality altogether, even in its, like, Marxist-Leninist form. But, yeah, so, I mean, he's just completely talking out his ass. 
the government has canceled pride parades before because they kind of want to be neutral. They didn't, they don't want to be neutral actually. They have been part since like 2012 every year of the International Day Against Transphobia and Homophobia for fuck's sake. I mean, this guy is talking uh, not only is he talking about his ass, but his ass hasn't read anything about Cuba since about 1985. Next he's going to be talking about like the crisis in Mariel and the Marielitos in that new movie Scarface about the Marielitos. And this whole thing, you know, so it's, it's just not true what they say. Uh, oh, he's getting roasted by his own chat. Just Jace, he says, has conflating heterosexuality with heterogeneity. Well, he's obsessed with sexuality for the same reason reactionaries always are. They will always want to control people's sexuality. And they all want to be very prudish about it. I mean, you'd think that he would have learned to less... Th well, this is 13th August. This is before the shit hit the fan with his little boy, Caleb. Um, so, who knows? But, who knows where it's going to go. But, I mean, this is like, this is Caleb's line as well. Caleb Muppet's line. Like, oh, sexuality needs to be tightly controlled. And then it turns out that he's, like, fa forcing his fucking members into sex work for him. I mean, yeah. I have a feeling... That there, there, there's some shit that we're going to find out about uh, has one day. Hey, uh, so no, I don't think capitalism gives rise to heteronormativity. I also don't think there's any evidence that queerness points to socialism. Now, I um, well, I don't know that. Uh, see, I will say I don't actually think that queerness inherently points to socialism. I think there is a liberal queerness that exists. And that can be recuperated into capitalism. But capitalism certainly is heteronormative. And, I mean, even without actually talking about that specific issue, because no, it wasn't just, it wasn't on the radar for them at the time. Or, like, on the mainstream radar for the most part. I mean, Marx and Engels are talking, when they're talking about the bourgeois familia, familia yeah, I mean, the bourgeois familia, the bourgeois family, I mean, they're basically saying, yeah, the the capitalist system creates the family structure in its image, and that would necessarily, though they didn't remark on it specifically, mean a heteronormative one. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of... Yeah, have you ever read, you know, El Che de los Gays? The, the gay activist during the Allende years in Chile? And you read, like, the leftist press from those times, the Chilean leftist press, and it's, everybody's just slagging him off completely. And nobody's heard of it, but every, and meanwhile, like, you know, 50 years later, he's el che de los gays, and there are algunos hueones que ni siquiera conozco. I do think, though, what they call queerness might actually point toward uh, socialism in, in one sense, and I think that could be the national socialism of... Wait... He, he, he's equating queerness to the Nazis? Ernest Rahm and the SS in the 1930s. So. Wait, okay, he is in a fucking nationalist socialist organization, a Nazbol organization. And he's, yes, he is actually, he just literally just equated queer people to Ernst Röhm and the SA. And let's just remember that the SA, yeah, they had a bunch of, there were a bunch of, like, gay Nazis in it. But the thing is, the official position was homophobic. The Nazis, as an official party, were viciously homophobic. They would actually have... I mean, they wouldn't express it quite the way that Haas says it, but they agreed with him. That is definitely a form of socialism that was associated or was... Oh, and notice that he's also calling this... He's calling Nazism a form of socialism. No, it fucking isn't, dude. It is the exact... No, it's, it's the opposite of a form of socialism. It is a form of not socialism. Jesus Christ, I mean, this guy, it's like, it may, it's like the one subject he can speak coherently on is international law. 
yes, a form of socialism. And queerness, he equates to Ernst Röhm and the Sturmabteilung. Jesus, this guy is rank. Oh, well, the Institut for Sexualwissenschaft was something that um, Castro's daughter came up with. She imported it to the U.S., I guess, or something. Fuck knows. Yeah, yeah, I mean, these are all things that you might well point out to him, but uh, I, I think that they are a little bit too facty for him, and he likes bullshit. God, he is so amazingly full of shit. Okay, this guy... We're... Uh, this guy is not a roast. This guy is a curanto. This is gonna take some time. You gotta dig the hole. You gotta get the fucking little underground fire going. You need the leaves on top of it. And you need some fucking veg. And some white wine. Un curanto chilote, well. Nada de, sa nada de asado. Okay. And with... Oh, yeah, here he is getting... He's Here he is saying that he doesn't know anything about Cuba. Because the thing is, he Cuba has been, for the past 10 years, participating in the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. They're kind of big on it. Like, if you go to Cuba Vision's YouTube cha page, YouTube channel, you'll find they actually talk quite a lot about this. If you go to Granma.cu, they talk a lot about this. There's a lot of discussion about it. They're kind of, it's kind of a thing for them the back and forth you know there's a catholic part of cuba that's against it the government has canceled pride parades before because they kind of want to be neutral they, no they're very much not neutral their fucking constitution is like queer enough that turfs will turn to stone if they look at it this whole thing you know so it's, it's just not true what they say um so no i don't think capitalism gives rise to heteronormativity Capitalism literally has given rise to heteronormativity. In fact, a lot of places in the world had not actually had heteronormativity until capitalist capitalism was brought to their shores by imperialists, like Africa, for example. I also don't think there's any evidence that queerness points to socialism. Now, I do think, though... Here it comes. This is what I was talking about. What they call queerness might actually point toward uh, socialism in, in one sense, and I think that could be the national socialism. You uh, he, he, he heard that, right? This is what I'm talking about. He's just... Of Ernest Rahm and the SS. In the First of all, it's not Ernest Rahm. It's Ernst Röhm. And he's not in the SS. Like, okay, apart from... He got, like, how much... He, he could di diagram all the shit that's wrong with that sentence. First, he says that social Nazism is a form of socialism, and that queerness is Nazi adjacent. And then he says that Ernest Rahm, by which he means Ernst Röhm, was in the SS, which he f rather notoriously was not. He was in the SA. And during the power struggle between the SA and the SS that culminated in the Night of the Long Knives, that's why he got fucking taken out. 30s. So that is definitely a form of socialism that was associated or was the conclusion of what they call a queerness. And, and no, it actually wasn't. They were, they fucking burned down this Institut für Sexualwissenschaft. They, I mean, they, criminalizing gay people was kind of a thing for them. The fact that they were gay people in the SA, in fact, part of what they were doing, part of the, what the Night of the, Night of the Long Knives was about, was they were trying to purge the gay men in the SA. He arrives at that because he's a fucking incel. So that, that's my response. Great. Okay, next up is Astro Proletariat. Um, we'll go whenever you're ready. Hello, thank you. Um, I just have a simple question here. It should be done pretty quickly. Uh, oh, I can't wait. Um, do you see unions and striking as a viable option for both revolution in developed and undeveloped nations? Oh, okay, somebody is actually... somebody. Once again, somebody in his chat is having a go at him. Is national socialism with socialism? Yes, yes, has his chat. He, that's, he actually said that shit. That's that's who you're that's who you're hanging out with there. 
if so, how do you, how do the how do the two situations compare? Uh, yeah, it just depends on the context. Obviously, striking can be an effective. I mean, look at the Indian farmers' strike. It's for unions, again, it depends. What see, unions are an institution, and they're an institution that is either hegemonic or counter hegemonic. So, in the United States, the Amazon Labor Union is a counter hegemonic union. It's completely independent of the Democrats or it was at least, it's completely independent of the established unions, it's a completely new union formed from scratch, that kind of places it... Well, okay, so this is a very black and white approach to it, yes. I mean, I mean, it's more, it's not, you can't really say, I mean, with the exception of, like, company unions, or what are sometimes called the Christian unions, that are just literal scab unions, they're not, they're, they're just fake, they specifically are created by companies in order to claim that workers already have union representation and prevent actual unions from being able to interact with them. I would it's more accurate to say that pretty much every union has both of those tendencies. You've got a bureaucracy that often ends up I mean, once a union is well enough established, if it is a union that has an actual formal bureaucracy as opposed to being more of a workplace solidarity union kind of thing, then, yeah, you're going to have, like, hegemonic tendencies in that bureaucracy because they're going to try to act legally and shit like that. But you're going to have counter-hegemonic tendencies on the shop floor. I mean, it's like the same thing where people will say... Um, yeah, I mean, it, the, oh, God, it, 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 the whole just quality of this argument is painful. It strategically is a counter-hegemonic institution, whereas most of the big unions in the United States are hegemonic institutions. Yeah, yeah, if we just pretend that there's no conflict, like fucking the Teamsters, yeah, if you look at just the top bureaucracy, yeah, totally hegemonic, totally in tune with the capitalists. But there are tendencies within the union that are specifically trying to stop that. Same thing with, like, say, the teachers' unions in the U.S. I mean, same with a, pretty much any union you can name that's an actual legit union. So, you know, you have to really evaluate the context. Um, and I, I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all answer to this. But I will say that it's not inherently... Um, you He's making me here. seasick. Uh, you know, I don't know what the word would be. They're not inherently revolutionary or inherently even uh, against capitalism or anything like that. And how do you think it contrasts in both uh, undeveloped and developed nations? I think um, underdeveloped countries, I would, this is just a guess, random guess. Okay. Probably have a union sector that is more um, um, new, right? And so it's basically probably has a more popular dimension to it. Popular. Uh, God, okay, he just does not know anything about this. Because, I mean, you look at, I mean, first of all, you look at the global south, the imperial periphery. Actually, their union movements are often at least as old as the unions in the uh, imperial core. Like, I mean, the Chilean unions, for example, go back to the late 19th century, more or less. I mean, and you have actually union organizing against colonialism in a lot of places. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and a revolutionary would slap him in the face. That's kind of, uh, that's what a revolutionary would do to him. He could, he could just use a little bit of a smack. But, um... So, so you can't just say, oh, well, the unions are newer there. That's, they have, there's a whole different fucking dynamic of struggle going on there because they're fucking, I mean, you have the colonization and the workers' organization against colonization and play eh, all over the, yeah, this guy, the, yeah, this, this guy is saying that the, the third world just got unions. They just found out what unions are. I mean, I'm sure in Cuba they'll be they'll be fascinated to hear this. I mean, first he tells everybody that Cuba's um, a homo that you know the Cuban state is homophobic. <laughs> yeah, 
eh, 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 de verdad, eh, eh, es una huevo nao. No sabe nada de nada de lo que habla. I mean, it's like, because, I mean, you've got union organizing going way back in a lot of these countries, like, say, Korea, for example, again, because you have a working class struggle that was also a struggle against colonialism, and you get, so you get unions as part of an anti-imperialist struggle. You get, you would, like, Ireland, for example, another country mostly decolonized at this point, or, uh, and there, too, I mean, the struggle, the union struggle, the working class struggle, and the fucking struggle against British imperialism have gone hand in hand basically for as long as they both existed. I mean, what he's saying is just such complete ahistorical nonsense. Oh, I mean, probably his line on the third world and anarchism is to say that there are no anarchists in the third world, that everybody in the third world is Marxist-Leninists. I mean, that's the line you hear from a lot of fucking Anglo-speaking, you know, leftists, especially, like, from a reactionary, like, faux leftists like this guy. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, no... Everybody in everybody in Africa is Marxist Leninist. Everybody in Latin America is Marxist Leninist. It, and it's like stairs in Clotario Blest. I mentioned to it. Uh, it seems to be more agrarian if we're talking about underdeveloped. And it seems to be more pivotal and organized. It, he says it seems to be because he doesn't know any of this shit. He does not know anything about this organizing things against the status quo. Whereas in developed countries, it appears that unions have a role of consolidating the status quo. So I guess that would be my best guess, right? You don't need a best guess. You could learn about these things. They, they, they aren't fucking secrets. You can go and read about the fucking labor movement in any country in the world you want to list. I mean, you want to know what the unions are like in Paraguay? What the history there is? There are books on this. There are books about the fucking trade, the history of the labor movement in Burundi, or Andorra, or fucking Liechtenstein. You can, like, you don't need to guess. You could actually read about this stuff. People have actually kind of it's been a very popular subject um, amongst communists to talk about the um, special characteristics of the the labor movement in the imperial periphery in the colonized countries. This isn't something you have to guess about. There are entire libraries of this stuff. All right, thank you, Oz. Great, thank you. Uh, so next up we have Pepe Pinochet. Pepe, what the... the what did I just hear? Great, thank you. Uh, so next up we have Pepe Pinochet. Pepe Pinochet, well. Yeah, wonderful. What wonderful fucking... <sighs> now these are the people who he hangs out with. Pepe Pinochet. Yes! Whenever you're ready. Howdy. So, um, not I don't quite know who you are, uh, but, but I've been listening. Um, I'm a I'm right wing myself. Well, the, you have something in common with Has there. Yes, this guy's name is Pepe Pinochet. He is a frog installed by the CIA to bring neoliberalism to Chile. But I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Um, so, all right, I would say that like here in the West, and by the West, I'm gonna I'm referring to uh, you know the five countries in the Anglosphere, and of course Western Europe, that there is um, kind of like a cultural war that's been waged. God, he's making me seasick with this rocking. Get another fucking chair, dude. It's white heterosexual Christian men where. Um, to put it in the words of um, Eric Zemmour from France, that um, our quote-unquote br brilliant progressives have brought racial war and religious war back to us. Eric Zemmour, does that name ring a bell to anybody in chat? <laughs> With their belief that people are undifferentiated beings, interchangeable, of no sex and without roots. 
Okay, so this guy's just a straight-up Nazi. So it will be very interesting to see just how much of that House actually disagrees with. And he, he also stated, are the young French going to agree to live as a minority on the land of their ancestors? Um, so that resume, resonates with me a lot. So okay, yeah, okay, so you're, you're fucking fascist. So I, I, from what I've heard you say, it seems like maybe there's some... Um, Maybe you're in some agreement there that, like... Some... Yeah, that's the impression I get, too, Pepe Pinochet. Well, I get the impression he's in some agreement there. People would consider me an ethnonat, which I I just kind of consider conserving your, your fucking land for your people. I was... yeah, okay, yeah, so he literally is an ethno-nationalist. Like, any... Uh, this, is, this is the part where you just kick him out of chat. This is not. This is the part where if you have any legitimacy as any kind of leftist, and he like tries to pretend to be some kind of leftist, occasionally, you just kick the motherfucker out of chat and you apologize for the fact that he was in there in the first place. Like that name should have been enough. Pepe Pinochet, conche tu madre, weón. That's something that you critique or, or you're against, though. So. You know, as far as that culture war is concerned, I would not describe it in those terms specifically. I think you can be more broad. Just... Okay, so he, he's not going to describe it in those terms specifically. So far, this does not feel like... No, the chair is humping him. The chair is humping him. Say, There's an attempt by the globalists... Uh, the, there's an attempt by the globalists to subject the populations of the world, actually, to the homogene homogenizing institutions. Okay, okay, this is just straight-up Nazi shit. No wonder, I mean, of course they're gonna get on. Let's see what if his chat actually manages... God, if you're gonna have a light background, then don't have your chat in white. It's illegible. Uh, of, of social engineering and social control. The reason why... It seems like, for example, I'll name them, right? Why are white people seemingly targeted? Well, they're only targeted in white countries because they form the majority of the people there. Uh, what? Okay, what the fuck did you just say? Because they form the majority, they have the potential or the possibility you know, of giving expression to a politics that is antagonistic to the interests of their own ruling class globalist elites. Their own ruling class globalist elites. It the world in Nazi. It's simplemente Nazi. This guy is just. I mean, this is just fast shit here. Like, can he just uh, drop this mecha tanky bullshit and just, you know, I mean, go back to his fucking incel roots? So that's why there's that, right? It, it's and it's ultimately against populism. Now, then there's Christianity. Why are they turning against Christianity? Well, because Christianity sucks shit. I mean, Christianity's been turning against most of us for a very long time. Like, ask a non-Christian what what living in under Christian hegemony for the past couple of thousand years has been like. Hey, Shakespeare, good to see you. God, this thing has is... I mean, he's like making... It, He's making Caleb Maupin look like some kind of fucking communist. This is, yeah, this isn't a dog whistle. This is just like, this is the announcements. This, is a, this isn't a dog whistle. This is a cadena nacional. Bando numero uno. Yo soy super facho. Because again, Christianity is this reservoir of values and beliefs and traditions. It's thousands and of genocide and bigotry and fucking torture and mass murder and plunder and imperialism. Like, you can't be an anti-imperialist, claim to be an anti-imperialist. I believe he claims to be. I mean, he's part of the CPI and they claim to be anti-imperialist. They're not, but they claim to be. It's in their marketing materials and not have a critique of the role of the fucking of Christianity in imperialism like the fucking Catholic Church's doctrine of discovery 
years old that cannot be conditioned or controlled by these institutions. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, which is also bullshit. I mean, that's this is the Christopher Hitchens view of religion. The idea that religion is this thing that cannot be controlled by institutions. That's bullshit. I mean, you look at every religious institution, and they are histo and what they do at different times and different places is very much historically determined. So, uh, which is why there is a big difference, actually, a lot of the time, for example, between white Christianity and, say, Palestinian Christianity, to the extent that white Christians actually kind of don't give a shit about Palestinian Christians, even though the people, uh, people fucking with them aren't even Christians. Yeah, he is basically a 12-year-old. Which want to create values from scratch. Yeah, and he thinks, uh, yeah, I mean, especially, you, you forgot, he also thinks sex is icky and girls are icky, and he doesn't want to hear about either of them. He is a fucking 12-year-old. Then there's heterosexuality. Why is there a war on heterosexuality? Well... A war on heterosexuality. Yeah, um, that seems to be more because... If you think about it, the traditional heterosexual relationship is always going to be the one that is the majority of any given people. Yeah, so who, so where's the war come in? It's also the relationship that gives rise to the, um, you know, uh, creation of new people, right? So heterosexuality is a specific... Except that's not true either, because, like, there are queer people creating new people. ...relation that creates other human beings. Controlling the way in which other human beings are created is a, is necessary if you want to. Yeah, and how's that the war against heterosexuality? That's like that's the the church has been doing for like centuries. That is what like the fucking capitalist, you know, European capitalist imperialist hegemony in the rest of the world has been doing for basically as long as it's existed, controlling people's sexuality. God, uh, yeah, I mean, this guy is totally, I mean, it's like, it is actually very mask off that this, that Caleb Maupin will be seen with this fucking guy. And my understanding is he's still standing him. Yeah, because he's an incel. This, like, plan to homogeneize and, and institution the entire population and the reason why heterosexuality has to be targeted is because hetero heterosexuality isn't being targeted the fact that queer people exist is not targeting homosexual heterosexuality you dickhead it just means some of us aren't interested in it because uh, yeah heterosexuality right, from a Freudian perspective contains the seeds of alternative forms of sociality and, and uh, from a Freudian perspective um, and culture uh, it, because it because it produces that family unit which is the you know it's the unit of civilizations okay so whereas you know the reason they're promoting the L in the unit of civilizations I mean again this is goes to what you were hello Rika this is um, this is what what Yaguara was saying yesterday is he goes, uh, you, she was saying, tell me you've never taken an anthropology class without telling me you've never taken an anthropology class. Because, like, his whole sort of universal heterosexuality shit, I mean, it only makes sense if you think that the, that the world, that history doesn't exist. LGBT stuff so much, at least in part, is because... There's no threat that this is going to give rise to an alternative unit of a, of, a, of a civilization antagonistic to the ones the globalists are trying to create. Uh, okay, so you're saying that the ruling class is, is been violently opposed to non cishet sexualities for ages because they aren't a threat? They are comp the I mean the compulsory that the ruling class is big on compulsory heterosexuality because homo heterosexuality is a threat to the ruling class. I mean, and I love how he like acts like he talks about like fucking queer acceptance as like Western hegemonic culture or something like that. It's like it, it it's in my lifetime that queer acceptance 
has been become anything that most uh, that you know sort of on the main that the mainstream even wants to be associated with. Yeah, he thinks the 1950s was 6,000 BCE. That's about right. I mean, because it is in my lifetime, and actually really thinking about it, really kind of starting in my, like, early 20s, that we actually started, that there actually started to be really uh, a, main, a real, truly mainstream support for, for LGBT rights at all, uh, you know, even rhetorically, like, in the 1990s, yeah, the, yeah, there was the Bipartisan Defense of Marriage Act. For fuck's sake. Uh, so this idea, he's acting like this is like something that the ruling class have just always... The, oh, I'm sorry, the globalists, by which he means the Jews. It's the, it's the bracket, bracket, bracket globalists. And I have just always been trying to do, like, you know, Stonewall didn't happen. Like, I mean, God, this guy. It is so mask off that Ke of Caleb Maupin to be associated with him because this guy's just fash. I mean, he can put as many hammers and sickles on, uh, you know, in his bling as he wants. He's just, he's just fash. Every time he's, he opens his mouth, he just says some Nazi shit. 